Good morning. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful Saturday morning. Yeah, man. Got my plain brew. Coffee going. Oh, yeah. Mm. A lot of people, they say that that's plaid rube. Well, if you take the, the P off, now I'm not going to say, hey, I met this chick and I got lad. No, you got laid. Played. You understand? It's played. At least it is in the garage. <laughs> All right. Got a couple things to talk about today. The first thing I want to talk about is Bobby got his scooter, man. Bless his heart. I'm so I'm so glad. It warms my heart knowing that Bobby got his scooter. Got him a free scooter, which is not really free because he paid for one and lost it. So, if you think about it that way, he didn't really get a free scooter. He just got one stolen from him. And, Bobby, if you're watching... If you're watching this, Bobby, I'm going to tell you something. That's probably an inside job. That person that stole that scooter from you probably lives in that building that you're in. And they're probably going to try to steal this next scooter. So you're going to have to think about this on how you could keep this guy that probably lives in your building from stealing this scooter. That's just, that's just the way that it works. And also, I want to I, I want to address something else. It's kind of bothered me. The czar. It's Bobby. I watched this video, and he put it out there, and he showed the receipt and everything. Everything was cool, you know. Bobby's just trying to do the best he can. And his receipt, I think it was like thirty four hundred or thirty five hundred dollars. Okay. Now he raised, I think, on the. The GoFundMe, he got like forty-five or forty-six hundred dollars from that GoFundMe, and as far as I'm concerned, that doesn't bother me. Bobby, he he, he did, they did a GoFundMe. Bobby got that money. That's wonderful. You know, go for it. But Bobby's scooter was thirty-four hundred dollars. Here's my question. This is my question. Did Patrick take some of Bobby's money? That, you know, that's just an honest question. It's like, did Patrick take fucking Bobby's money? So Bobby had to go buy a scooter that cost less money because Patrick took it? I don't know. I went over there the other night. Uh, Patrick had a live stream. And I was just going to ask Patrick. But Patrick, for whatever reason, he's like a, a wet piece of paper. You know, you can just stick your finger right through him. You know, he's got me blocked from his channel now where I can't even ask a simple question. So I was like, well, fuck it. I'll just put it on my next video and we'll just ask the question there since he doesn't want to fucking be a man and, and just directly deal with me. He wants to play the fucking victim here or something. I mean, this whole fucking generational victim mentality bullshit, man. Fucking man it up. Fucking man up, Pat. God damn. So anyway... If you guys could do me a favor, next time you see Patrick running around, make sure you ask him. Say, man, did you did Bobby get all his money, did, or did you take some of that money? You know, who knows? I mean, Patrick makes plenty of money. Bobby's on a fixed income. You know, Patrick's always selling shit. He's on there selling records left and right. Patrick's got plenty of fucking money. So anyway, this could be this could be over and done with. But you know, fucking, it's it's like. Never mind. We're not even going to. Let's just move on. So, yesterday, I was working out here in the garage. My house is getting kind of cluttered up, okay? So, I've made the decision. I need to, before winter gets here, because, you know, here we are. We're, out, we're coming out of summer, going into fall. Before it starts getting cold, I wanted to get all that stuff in my house out here into the garage, okay? And yesterday, I got up early, and I, I just cleaned everything. You can't see it because it's over on that side of the garage. It's basically where I was working. I worked a little bit over here, but mainly it was over on that side. And I cleaned out all my stuff out of the garage, okay? And I added a shelf over here, 
and I pulled out some some speakers. I got these big speakers, you know, uh, like Acoustic Research, 2AXs, you know, uh, Alltech Model 7s. I've got the uh, Advents, the big Advent speakers, you know, just things like that. And I've got some skids, and I've, I've got a shelf over there, and I've got a skid that slides under there. Now, check this out. Yesterday, I pulled 20, at least 20 pairs of speakers out of my house. <laughs> it was like, I mean, it was like, oh my God, I can't believe I've got this many sets of speakers. You know, and this is kind of like going to, I used to have a whole lot more stuff that I do right now. So, I pulled about 20 pairs of speakers. Okay, 20 pairs. And my house is, it's, I still got to organize it a little bit. I'm, I'm still thinking about how I want to do it and stuff like that. So, the garage is done for right now, probably till at least next year. It's, I got, got everything. I mean, I pulled out all kinds of stereo equipment and everything, and I put out here in the garage. And yesterday, after I was done, I went in there, and I've got at least 20 more pairs of speakers in the house, still in the house. <laughs> Dude, there's something wrong with you, man. You got fucking 40 pairs of speakers. But, you know, that's how you that's how you, you experiment with different things. You know, you got a different amp. Puts you a, different, a couple of different sets of speakers on there. You can hear how it sounds versus, you know, sometimes it's not the amp, but sometimes it's the speakers. You know, I've had so much stuff, man, and I've been blessed to to listen to just different types of gear. I love the old stuff, though, man. Uh, there's a channel called Upscale Audio. And I think the guy's, is it Kevin Deals or something? But it's funny, every once in a while, I love watching this channel. He's got a store out there in California, and they sell the, the high-end stuff, like, you know, three four $400,000 speakers and shit like that. And he did a video yes last night or yesterday, whatever you want to call it. You have to go check it out. All these Tenoy, um, oh, it's like they're top of the line Tenoy speakers, and they're like thirty five thousand dollars each or forty thousand dollars each or something. But every once in a while he'll do a video and he'll he'll let it s sneak out about how he loves the vintage audio gear. And in that particular video, he was talking about it, man, about how much he loves the vintage. He's got all kinds of, he's got, his, you know, more vintage stuff than me. But if you ever watch his videos, he's got like sand suies and stuff like that sitting around. Daisy's out there playing. I was sitting there yesterday, and Daisy starts barking, you know, like she normally does. And... I see her running across the yard. She had her tail tucked between her legs, right? And I'm like, uh-oh, something's going on out there. Because, you know, she was, like, looking, like, that direction, and she was running that direction, and her tail was between her legs. And I said, something's going on. And, you know, it's like, I'm, I'm daddy, you know, I'm Daisy's daddy. So I went running out there, and this big fucking raccoon was in my backyard. Well, it wasn't. It was, like, right on the outside of the fence. Okay, I got a chain link fence. And he was right there on the outside of the fence just looking at Daisy. And I've, I'm a fisherman. I'm out fishing all the time. I'm in nature all the time. Raccoons usually don't want to mess with people or dogs or anything. They're usually pretty scared. So I was just went over and I was like, go on, go on, go on your way, you know. And this raccoon just kind of stared at me. And raccoons are scared to death of dogs. So Daisy's sitting there, and I said, go get it, Daisy, go get it, right? So Daisy was running over there to <laughs> get this raccoon, and this fucking thing climbs up like like something out of, a mo out of a movie. He just climbs up on top of the fence, and he's, like, looking at us. And I was like, this thing's coming after us. He's coming over the fence after us. So I called Daisy. I said, get over here, get over here. And she comes over. And that damn thing, it was, I don't know what's wrong with it. It was a very big raccoon, though. And it wasn't backing down. So I hope it's not, it's not rabies or I hope it's not sick. Because, my goodness. And it went, I watched where it went. It went over 
and it climbed right into my neighbor's house. So now I've got a raccoon problem. So I called the cops and I told the police, I said, I said, this raccoon's out here just chasing my dog, you know, didn't really chase the dog, but he was standing off on my dog, you know, and I told her, I said, this raccoon's in my backyard in the daytime, and that's usually not, you know, doesn't happen in the daytime, and I said, this thing's, like, very confrontational, I said, uh, do you guys come out here and get this thing? She goes, oh, we don't do that, and I said, well, I said, that he's going to get a hold of his ass. I said, because I'm going to shoot it. I said, I'm not going to let a raccoon attack me or a dog. She goes, you're not allowed to do that. I said, I know I'm not allowed to do that. I said, I'm just letting you know that if this thing attaches itself to my leg, it's going to be a dead raccoon. <laughs> she says, okay, okay, you know, you're not allowed to do that, though. I said, well, I don't care what you say. I said, but I'm allowed to defend myself on my own property. I said, that's just tough shit for the raccoon. Now, granted, I'm not sitting here with a gun. I don't have a gun or nothing. The garage door's open. and So I'm just kind of, we're going to see what happens here today. And I'm sure he's been around here for a while and he hasn't messed around or anything. So I don't know. My my son's got a 22, so I don't want to shoot it with a 9 millimeter. Not in the residential area. So maybe I'll borrow my son's 22 or something. And it's a big raccoon. Yeah, I mean, it's big. It's so, you'd have to have a special live trap to trap this thing. And if it's sick, you don't want to put it in a live trap, because that means you got to go take a sick raccoon somewhere else to let it go. So, so we're in this, we're, we're, uh, we're in this limbo area. We're in analysis of things right now, so to speak. All right, I want to show you guys some, uh, my Bill Monroe records. Okay, I pulled out some Bill Monroe. Bill Monroe was from Kentucky. Uh, I believe he died, what was that, 76 he died or something? He was born in like 1912, and he died in 76, I do believe. Now, they they say that he was the father of bluegrass. And see, there we go, we're labeling people, we're categorizing people. And maybe he was, maybe he was to you. You know, I, I don't know. I try not to, to do that. I do it. You know, I do it. You do it. We all do it. I try not to do it because there's so many other bluegrass artists out there. You know, I'm a real big Ralph Stanley fan. The Stanley Brothers, I love their older stuff. You know, so to sit here and say that Bill Monroe's like the king of bluegrass, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I mean, why do we have to do that? I like his style, though. He plays the mandolin. Fred corrected me. I said he played the, the banjo one time, and Fred corrected me, and Fred was right. He plays the mandolin. You, so you can see here in this picture, Bill Monroe with his mandolin. And I love that they were very, they had this art form by the way they played. They had this group, and it was Bill Monroe and the Bluegrass Boys. They used one microphone. That's how they did their concerts and stuff. One microphone. And these are acoustic instruments, okay? One microphone. So you had three or four guys. You know, you had the mandolin. You had the violin. You had a guitar. You know, I think three or four of these guys. That's probably three. Let's see here. Oh, it doesn't say right offhand. But anyway, they used one microphone which is very hard to do. I'm, I'm not an artist, but like they would hold their instruments up to the microphone and they would take turns. Like the guy would play the fiddle, the other guy, and they would share it. And then they would all move out of the way and Bill Woodrow would come up and say, to me, that's just art. You know, it's just, that would be a wonderful concert. His music was wonderful. I mean, it's just beautiful, beautiful music. You know, here's another thought. Okay, you say, well, he's the, the father of bluegrass music. You know, I mean, you know, a lot of this old old time music came from slaves. Okay, they, you know, we kind of stole it from the slaves. 
country music, you know, was from, it originated a lot of it from the slaves, you know, slave music, unfortunately, you know. And then they think, well, he's got, he, you know, and, and Bill Monroe was a songwriter, and, and, you know, and but the roots of these things, you know, think about what I'm saying. The roots of these things, folk music, blues music comes from folk, country music comes from folk, folk music, and a lot of that folk music comes from the slaves. But not all the slaves, but you know what I'm saying? So that's why I said we got to be careful. It's like, oh, you know, it's the white man's music, you know? And I mean, that to me, it's just racist. You know what I'm saying? And I don't try not to be racist. I would rather educate you and bring people out of racism, okay? <laughs> you know, enjoy the music, you know what I mean? Why can't we embrace or African-American brothers and all the great things they've done for our country, including give us beautiful, beautiful music. Okay. Just <laughs> anyway, let's talk about Bill Monroe. I'll show you my records here. This one here, Bill Monroe. I got this one. Now I got a couple doubles like on my last one. It says Bluegrass Instrumentals. This is on MCA Records. Now, a lot of these, they don't have titles on them. They're just different records here. Cry, Cry, Darling. Goodbye, Old Pal. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to listen to some of these today. There's Bill Monroe with this mandolin set there. From Kentucky. My family's from Kentucky. This is one of those simulated stereo with Bill Monroe sings country songs. Peach Pickin' Time in Georgia. There we go. Peach Pickin' Time in Georgia. Where do you think that song came from? Then here, the father of bluegrass music, Bill Monroe and the Bluegrass Boys. White Horses, Doghouse Blues. Do you see what I'm saying? Tennessee Blue, no letter in the mail, Blue Yodel Number 7, Orange Blossom Special. Now this one, this one here is a very, very good album. If you haven't got this album, you should probably pick it up. It's called Bead Blossom, and what it is, it says right here on the back, it's Bill Monroe's seventh annual bluegrass festival. And they had this over in Indiana. Back home again in Indiana, it says right there. You can see they took some of the pictures from the concert and they put on the back of the album. Now it's a gatefold. I'm not going to pull it out, but I'll tell you what, this is an absolutely beautiful record. And I think I showed this one. I've got another copy of this. Usually if I see a Bill Monroe record sitting there for a dollar or two, I'm going to pick it up. I mean, why wouldn't you? There's another one. Bill Monroe. The high lonesome sound of Bill Monroe. Well, look how wore out that mandolin is on there. You know he's played. You know, you can't take it away from him. The guy's a, he was a wonderful bluegrass artist. Bluegrass Ramble, Bill Monroe. It's got little baggy. Back to old Kentucky. <laughs> Cotton. Cotton fields. Don't, don't, don't think I don't know what I'm talking about. Now this next album here is Bill Monroe. And this this thing was a kind of a trick. Okay, I found a couple copies. I have a couple copies here. Now this is on the old Deca label. But this one here, this is a promo. It says a sample copy right here. It's 1972. But here's the thing, man. You want to hear some best stuff? It says Uncle Penn. Uncle Penn's not even on this album. Bill Monroe's Uncle Penn. Wouldn't you think that Uncle Penn would be on this album? Wouldn't you think he'd be on this album? There's a song, they don't have Uncle Pitt on here. They don't have Uncle Pitt on here, but there's a song on here called Poor White Folks. What the hell's going on? 
the Country Music Hall of Fame. Billboard Road. Now, this is a good one right here. This would be a good one to get if you're looking for a Billboard Road. It's got Mule Skitter Blues, Kentucky Waltz, Get Up John, Rocky Road Blues. Yeah. Put my little shoes away. There's another one. This is a gospel album, Bill Monroe, A Voice from Old High, Bill Monroe's gospel album here. And this is on MCA from New York. And I've got two of these. I've got two of these. It's another gospel album. It says, I'll meet you at church Sunday morning. Boy, that's a beautiful song. Bill Monroe, The Bluegrass Boys. Going home on the Jericho Road. That's a beautiful song, too. So, there we have it, fellas. I kind of went a little long on this, but that's all right, man. I, I enjoy my music. I enjoy my records, and I'm getting ready to finish my coffee and listen to my music, man. Hey, thank you for hanging out with Brother Brian. Hope you guys have a wonderful holiday, man. I'm out of here.